Stan the Wolfman here, and today I want to make a video on comparing some of the best DASA double action, single action, or traditional double action SHTF full size uh, police or military duty type pistols. My best uh, best CCW, best DASA CCW pistols video has gotten pretty popular. So it seems there is an interest in hammer-fired guns. And there's quite a few reasons for that. Uh, number one is after the double action pull, you get a nice crisp single action pull that is better than uh, pretty much any striker-fired gun. And um, there's just a little more nostalgia to it. There's a little more feel to it. There's a little more connection to the pistol. And um, so if you're looking for the best CCW pistol, you should definitely look at the best DASA double action, single action CCW pistol video I did. But today we're going to talk about the full size duty military or SHTF type pistol or range pistol. Why might you want one? You might want one because of the low recoil, uh, the learning on, uh, better for a lot of people, funner to train with, etc. and so forth because of the larger size, heavier weight uh, less recoil, and if you ever need a strap on your thigh SHTF type pistol, most people are going to pick 9mm. And uh, certainly a lot of militaries and law enforcement around the world have. You see my other videos on other caliber, but capacity is really going to come into play uh, perhaps when things get really, really bad. On the table, I have a Beretta 92A1 that's been upgraded. Look at my stock to not. I did two videos, a full range video when it was stock, a full video stock to not when it wasn't, when it was upgraded, uh, also videos on how to upgrade your Beretta 92 to make it uh, particular uh, for yourself, what upgrades to make. Look at that video. John Wick's pistol, HK P30L. I have a, a Y picked John Wick's pistol, HK P30L for duty when I'm an armed guard, why I carry this. And um, not all firearms are mine. I borrow a lot. That's my duty pistol with the other firearms. Uh, this one is little well known, the Bursa TPR9, which this would be a very good budget buy, range pistol, home defense pistol, uh, etc. So I'll start to break them down. I guess we will look at the Beretta 92A1 first. 4.9 inch barrel, 4.45 but polygonal barrel, so faster barrel, and 4.3 inch barrel are 5.4 to 5.5 inches tall. Can you conceal it? Yes, with a good holster. Uh, the P30L, I have carried concealed appendix, even though I'm an old middle-aged guy with a big belly, the P30L. With this Tolster holster, use code Dan the Wolfman to get 15% off of Tolster holster. And uh, for the Beretta JM Custom Kydex, I went with the loops for ultimate. Uh, if I ever needed to be in a situation, ultimate retention for the 92A1. But lo and behold, I just found out it uh, also fits. I mean, it push, the safety pushes it to the side a little bit but it also fits this TPR9. So something to consider there with the GM Custom Kydex holster. And yeah, I can conceal this with my belly in a black shirt fairly well. So I'm gonna take them to the range and see how they compare to the, each other. I'll probably use some 124 grain, the closest to NATO I got, but mostly I'm gonna use and see if they all function with the military's official M1152 round. Yes, our military is not using 124 NATO anymore. They're using this 115 and really plus P plus pressures. It's over plus P pressure. It's well into uh, over 39,000 PSI uh, and extremely high velocity. It's rated at 1320 feet per second. I'm probably going to get 1365 out of this, probably about 13 even though it's a longer barrel, but not polygonal, probably about 1335 braided barrels are known to be slow. And uh, probably 13 to 1320, I would guess, out of the 4.3 inch TPR9. Uh, so that will be interesting to see the recoil and uh, everything in a good SHTF round if you function test it because it is a flat point. 
So the military probably did do it just because less weight for shipping. Why didn't they stay with NATO? And I don't know, maybe the flat point does give you a little bit of more tissue crush off to the side, tearing ability a little bit. Uh, but I'm guessing they did studies on how to go through uh, loaded magazines and stuff on chest carriers. I'm going to guess that's the secondary uh, to the primary being when you're shipping, you know, 100,000 round pallets, 10,000 round pallets. Uh, what the weight issue is uh, with airplanes, gas mileage and all of that. So let's start with these are all empty firearms. All have been triple checked. Let's start with the Beretta 92A1. So this is not the typical Beretta M9 or 92F, 92FS that you saw in Die Hard and Lethal Weapon. Uh, look at my stock to not, my not, my upgraded video, range video. I put a lot of cool footage in there from John Woo movies, uh, Lethal Weapon, and uh, et cetera. So um, Boondock Saints. So a very unique pistol. I like the rounded trigger guard. Now the 92X and more modern Berettas do now have this rounded trigger guard, but at the time they did not. So this is the rounded trigger guard, the rail for a weapon mounted light. Uh, and more importantly, it has a recoil buffer in it, just like the P30L does versus the regular P30, just like this does versus a regular Beretta 92. It has a recoil buffer in it. In fact, this is a captured recoil spring with that buffer. So especially for hot at ammo like this or plus P plus hollow points, these two will do better than a lot of pistols as far as long-term durability and not giving enough that you're shooting plus P plus rounds or active duty M1152 rounds in it once we get to the range and make sure they function. So the classic pistol, a little thick for most people. The new 92Xs are a flat back Vertec. This has the hump. I think I'm good with either. I think I actually prefer the hump, but I have slightly XL hands. Uh, if you have tiny hands, the trigger reach for that first DA pull might be a problem. Your single action, here's double action. Now, this has been modified a little bit thinner. Aluma grips, check out Aluma grips. That definitely helps me. I use the joints once I started training with revolvers and became a better shot. Instead of in between tip, I use the joint for every pistol now. Uh, nice smooth trigger, but instead of the 20 pound hammer spring, or nowadays they come with 16 pounds in the X's, this is a 13 pound uh, hammer spring, either from Wilson Combat or from uh, Langdon Tactical LTT. It's got the LTT in it. Very nice pistol, 33.3 ounces. Very long though, eight and a half inches overall length. A lot of guys are carrying this. Uh, why would you want to carry a full-size pistol? Because it makes you feel good when you are easier to get a good master grip on the pistol on your draw. And that is very, very important in a defensive gun use. Can you conceal this? Yes. Will most people do it? No. Can a lot of people do it in the wintertime? Yes. Are you going to do it in the summertime? Probably not, just due to weight, but it can be done. Nowadays, I believe in 92, I wish I had a 92 G Centurion GR, a 92X Centurion GR is what I would like if I were going to carry a Beretta nowadays, because that gets you about five ounces lighter than weight, I believe, if the weight they give is actually with the magazines. There's also a lot of magazines available of this, different ones from Beretta, uh, McCarr magazines, which are the best in the business. Uh, and I have some videos on this with the McCarr magazine. And when things started to go woogie boogie a few years ago, yeah, I was rocking this because capacity at that point does kind of potentially become an issue. So 4.9 inch barrel, new 92X is a 4.7 inch barrel. Uh, you're looking at 4.25 or 4.3, I think 4.3 on the Centurions and the Compacts. So... You can't go wrong with this, and this one is the heaviest duty one there is, where you can actually replace the night sights, uh, the front sight, because that's a problem on the other Berettas. So until recently, you weren't able to replace on typical 92FS M9s, and that's a very big issue. Excess sights, these are F8. I also love the R3D. Excess sights, use code Dan Wolfman in first order, 10% off. I don't get anything from that other than hooking you up. All right, on to the HK. P30L, I'm only doing that for a reason. It is empty. I have quadruple verified. Uh, the double action pull, this is stock, is not great. The first DA pull, honestly, is not great. The single action pull, I don't have a problem with. Let's go back to the Beretta. Again, this is not stock, so very smooth snacks a bit at the end, which you may or may not like, like if you have to make a headshot with our first shot. 
and uh, the reset is pretty short. I, I don't mind the reset at all. Some people find a little slop in the Berettas. There's a little take up, but once you just change a hammer spring, there's a reset to the wall. I think that's a very good trigger when you put a 13 pound hammer spring in it. That's a very easy thing to do. I don't know how easy it is to do with the HK. I decided not to mess with it. At some point, maybe I will or put a gray guns kit in it, etc. Here's the single action. So it's kind of a yeah, slop, but the single action is perfectly workable. The double action, and I'm decocking to put it in the true double action mode. Double action there, it's pretty smooth stacks. Stacks a lot, gets heavier, 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 breaks. So the double action pull on the AHK is probably the worst of all three, at least uh, maybe the same. I don't know. I think it's the worst of all three. Probably I don't remember how bad it was with the 20-pound hammer spring, but now modern ones with 16 is not going to be bad. A 16-pound is the used to be referred to as the D-spring. We came out of the D-spring or the double action only version where they were all. Anyway, HK P30L, John Wick's pistol, enough said. 4.45-inch, uh, yet polygonal HK barrels. Anyway, uh, going back to P239s and 40 and stuff, they got faster velocity than longer-barreled pistols. Uh, so that's, I believe, all HKs are made with pretty tight tolerances and very fast polygonal barrels. So that's something to consider. The Beretta is 8.5 inches overall length. The P30L 7.71 inches, so 7.7, .7, 8.5. Both are 5.4 inches height. This was 5.43 5 height. 4.45 inch polygonal barrel, 6.42 sight radius. So mostly it's a nice full grip, getting a good grip on a gun, why you might want to conceal carry, or at least as your SHTF on a war belt or on a thigh holster, Paul Harrell style, uh, why you might want to have a gun like this. Besides just training, because if you're training people, a uh, small woman might not like the hump. The newer 92X Vertec grip would be better for smaller-handed people. But they're not going to have uh, a lot of recoil. 33.3 uh, ounces, only 27.52 ounces, because this is a Palmer frame versus an aluminum frame pistol on the other two. So Palmer frame here, 27.52. So for a full size, if you're lo really looking at weight reduction and weighing what's in your sack, uh, your backpack and all of that, then this might be the better full size uh, route to go. And uh, let's get on to the budget TPR9. Empty firearm, all have been many times checked. The only problem I have with this pistol is the safety decocker is backwards. So that's a decocker, you can't carry it cocked and locked. Um, here in single action, and you'd have to decock it and sweep it back down to fire. And I don't think there's like a this has the GD cocker spring put in there um, to make it flip back up. Usually they do not, unless it's a GD cocker version. The GD cocker was put in that, so it goes right back up into fire, which is preferable because I have ran this slide on this and some Smith and Wesson third gens, and while doing mag changes or etc. If I didn't get locked back, um, you know. You got a dead trigger. It goes into safety. This stock probably comes with the best trigger. Absolutely stock. So as a budget buy, double action, super, super smooth. Single action, smooth. Reset, nice and very, very short reset. Very, very short. That's Smith & Wesson third gen short. So as far as rapid fire, short reset, if that's something you want and a good stock light trigger, the TPR9 uh, is something very worthwhile to look at. Uh, nowadays, these I'm gonna not really get into capacity, 10, 15, or more than 15 rounds may come with the pistols. Uh, again, not all pistols are mine. I've only shot this like once before. But we'll see how they do on the range. So please watch the range review, and we'll see how this military uh, hot, 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 hotness M1152 does. The TPR9 splits a difference at 30.7 ounces, 7.56 inches long. So a little bit shorter if that maybe matters to you, especially carrying the appendix. This could be good. Longer helps you not keel out, but if you're kind of short like me, longer can also dig into your pelvic girdle uh, when you're sitting down and be painful. 5.5 uh, inches height, so just a little bit taller, 
uh, the shortest barrel, though, 4.3 inches. They do make a compact version. Uh, what you might choose, I don't want only three and a quarter inch on a heavier pistol. The the weight to capacity ratio, the 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 fightability ratio, the, with only three and a quarter inch barrel, the compact is a little bit heavy. That's why I chose the. Uh, that's why I would choose the long side if I was looking for a budget buy. Um, prices can always change, but I looked at the cheapest online nowadays. Prices have gone up. They're harder to find, $649, P30L, prices in the $610 to $750, almost $800 at a store range, but online $610 to $750, but the cheaper ones may have a safety or only have 10-round neutered unconstitutional magazines. So if you want the modern goodness magazines of standard awesome capacity, you're probably going to pay more. It's been harder to find ones that didn't have the external safety, which if you wanted, you could, and you could carry that cop to uh, I actually had a P30, L, a P, regular size P30, which I sold. I didn't like having the safety on there. Just carrying it, I was always worried it might accidentally go on, though it never happened. Uh, the decocker on the back of the P is on the back of the P30s. So slimmer lined, so you don't have the wide width that's reported on the other ones because of the safety levers. So you may like or not like that. I don't mind that. I don't mind it being on the back. I don't mind it being sweeped down. I do mind it being swept up if you're used to multiple platforms. Uh, having to sweep up to decock and then put back to fire if I was in a defensive gun use and I needed to make sure that guy in the ground was staying around until I heard the sirens and then safely, safely, thumb on the back of the hammer, reholstered, uh, it would be an issue. If it's your only one or your only SHTF big size uh, type pistol, it would not be a problem. South American different uh, forces, I'm sure, use the TPR9 versus TPR9. I have found it for $341. So 341 versus 650 versus 610 to 800 range. Um, this is probably a very good firearm, and I've fired it once before. We'll see how it does at the range. Again, dead trigger with the safety on. Nice, smooth, best stock trigger, and probably the shortest uh, reset. Probably even beats this with a gray guns or this with LTT. The reset's very, very short for rapid fire, uh, like a third gen Smith. Auto, if that's something you are looking for. So, guys, uh, can it be carried? Yeah, you can carry it in a JM Custom Kydex, something like that. This helps pull it in, or even around my big belly. Will I print a little bit? Yeah. If you're in a free estate, as long as you wear a black shirt, gray shirt, something like that, you probably don't have to. I don't know what other 92. A1 holsters or maybe even regular 92 FS holsters with a square trigger guard. Uh, this may fit in. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have experience with any of these firearms. If you're looking for more CCW size, lighter, 25 to 27 and a half ounces, look at my best DASA CCW uh, range review comparing two of probably the best choices. Again, I think you can get a 28 and a half if that's a true width magazine weight on a Centurion, 92X Centurion, because it shaves some weight off the hump. I held uh, a full-size 92X the other day. I think I actually prefer the hump, uh, but I could probably make do either way. Smaller hand people are going to want newer non-hump slash Vertec flat grip. Um, Batman, Spider-Man grips on a P30L or HK45. Wrap around, it's the only pistol with finger grooves that kind of works for everybody and feels like oh-so-goodness in your hand. Uh, and as a duty pistol, I've had to put my hand on it a couple of uh, times, uh, not draw, but a couple of like, uh, I think shit's about to go down. Um, you know, let me hover my hand near my pistol and uh, you want a good feeling. That's maybe why not to carry micros or only carry a micro like a Shield Plus or P365 XO or whatever in the summertime. And you might want something with more... Oh, good feeling. I feel safe. I feel like I could get into a gunfight and have longer barrel, longer sight radius to make more accurate hits, less, but much better recoil control, less recoil, um, especially in this because of the system and um, all that. So there are reasons why you might want to carry one in the winter or you might want one for range use and sharing with other people and they get better edge shooting besides just your CCW pistol and all these have rails at the bottom two slot two slot 
slot, uh, many, many slot for a weapon mounted light. That way, uh, one of these could be like your dedicated home defense pistol, though I like, you know, rifles, PCCs, short barreled, uh, not uh, short overall length shotguns and things of that nature. Uh, so anyway, guys, those are three very, very good options in 9mm. Of course, there's other options out there. Missing from the table would be a SIG P226 and a full CZ75B as far as long-term you know, pistols that have been out there. But this one is very, very overlooked, and therefore you can get it really cheap. And I think it's a vetted system. This is like the second one they used to have uh, earlier versions of these. Uh, some police and military forces do issue this. If you want long-term durability uh, forever and not have to replace anything, or if it's dry and look at my why choose John Wick's pistol for duty carry, you're going to find out more about that. And um, other than a locking block, maybe every 5,000 rounds. And on this, probably a new recoil every 20,000, I would think, because this one's captured. So it does need its own uh, versus other ones. Uh, but certainly, uh, Breda's, a lot of them have lasted a long time. Paul Harrell's been shooting his 92 FS or M9, whichever version it is. I think it's FS forever and ever and ever. Anyway, guys, please let me know if you have any experience with DASA pistols, if this helps you out. I know it was a long, long, long one. Thumbs up, share, subscribe, get down in the comments. Always makes me feel warm and fuzzy on the inside. And look at the range review, and we'll see how accurate I can do at different ranges and different drills as we go.